Uh, okay, you want to start on 30 what? Nine? Nine? Nine. Uh, okay, what did you guys go with? You didn't go with anything? Secant squared? You, that was your U substitution was secant squared? No me gusta. You already know the antiderivative of secant squared. Tangent, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. So that's fine. What we need to worry about is this T over 4 thing. Yeah, so U equals t over 4, which means du equals, nope, nope, 1 fourth dt, okay? So now we are ready to go. So I'm going to change this to secant squared of u. So this is all gone. Uh, the pi becomes... Pi over 4. The 0 becomes 0. And the dt becomes 4 four du. Yep. Yeah. Never you never use those every time say that. What does? U. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I went there and was in the candidate for a while. You went there? Like visited. Uh huh. Right. She was a student at Denver University. No, uh, the reason why that uh, caught my attention is because that really good golfer, the really good golfer from Hoquiam uh, committed to go to Denver University, and that surprised me. No, 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 the boy. No, right. Um, anyway, so now. Right. Antiderivative is four tangent of u. Okay. Tangent of pi over four. You're not looking it up. You're not using your calculator. You're using your brain. Pi over four is how many degrees? Nine. No. No. Oh my lord. I'm sending you out into the world with this. Forty-five. So the tangent of 45 degrees, it's a 45, 45, 90. It's an isosceles triangle, right? So the two legs are equal. So that means the ratio is going to be 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So it's going to be 4 times 1 minus. And then the tangent of 0 is just 0. Uh, so the answer here is 4. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you should just like, just because you should just like know it. I know, but you just should. It's like knowing the alphabet, you should just know it. Pi over 3, 60 degrees, pi over 4, 45 degrees, pi over 6, 30 degrees. Sorry. No, you just said it is my fault. It's exactly what you just said. I, I am. It's true. And, uh, she's speaking for herself. Yeah, I do. But not from you. My mommy. Uh, okay, questions about that? I don't know about you guys, but to me, it always sort of is a little bit startling that the area underneath the curve of secant squared t to the fourth from zero to pi, those are all pretty strange numbers. It comes out to be four. It's a curve. Yeah, it seems weird to me that that uh, is the case. Okay, what now? 40 through the rest. How far is the rest? To 50? 40 to 50? I just need 40, 40. I know, I'm very embarrassed in myself. Me too. Is it because of lack of effort or you just no, couldn't? I really uh, just could not do it. Okay. I wasn't asking you. I knew the answer to that already. Uh, all right, 40. So a well, here's the thing. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Look at your note card. Okay. What is a, is there something that has the derivative of cosecant cotangent? Yes. Co 
Okay, what is it? Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, the cosecant cotangent thing because the deriv we know the antiderivative of that is just going to be cosecant. So the only thing <laughs> that we need to worry about is uh, this pi t thing. Okay, so u is going to equal pi t. Yeah, which means du is pi dt. Okay. Uh, and then we're good to go. So cosecant of u, cotangent of u. So this is all gone. And then you need to divide by pi. So one over pi. Okay, so then I'm going to throw one over pi out here in front, which gives me a uh, Denver u right there. Oh, no, that's cosine. Okay. And then what are my new limits of integration if I take these uh, and plug it in for the u values? Right. Pi to one, one half pi. Yeah, so this is going to be one half pi, also known as pi over two. And then on the bottom it's going to be pi over six. Pi over six. Um, okay, so now it's antiderivative time. I don't know what just happened over there. Don't look at me. So we decided it was cos. Ne is it negative cosecant? Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be negative 1 over pi cosecant of u from pi over 2 to okay. pi over 6. Uh huh. Okay, but there's more to do. And we talked about this the other day, Cameron. You know cosecant goes with. I'm trying to have a conversation with Cameron here. Right. Right. Nice. What? I was asking, no, you were rude. I was asking Cameron a question and you interrupted. And I ignored your interruption. How is that me being rude? No, no, no. I specifically said, I said Cameron, because we just had this conversation the other day that he was having trouble remembering. I know, she's oversensitive, huh? Oh, yeah. So I was trying to address, yeah, that's okay, a specific need of a student. And you and Mackenzie both just blurted out the answer. So you should apologize to Cameron. Okay. So, um, so, Cosecant is the same as uh, 1 over sine, so this becomes negative 1 over pi sine of u, okay? So now I am going to turn to Brooke, who also expressed a specific need uh, of having a hard time understanding how to figure out the trig thingies without my help. How would you figure out what the sine of pi over 2 is? How would you approach that problem? I would try and picture the sine graph. Okay, perfect. So what would the sine graph look like? Well, it starts at 0. Uh-huh. So it goes up at pi over 4 is like where the first peak is, correct? Uh, no, the first peak is at actually pi over oh, 2. Okay, so yeah, because it one. takes a period of 2 pi to complete the oh, whole thing. Okay. okay. So, oh, no, I was wrong. It is pi over 4. Oh, no, it isn't. It's pi. Because this is 2 pi. 2 pi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, pi over two one, right? awesome. So pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So if I plug pi over 2 in there, then I get uh, 1. So that all works out to be negative 1 over pi. Okay, now this is a little bit trickier, the sine of pi over 6. How would you tackle that? Okay, but we're not looking at a cheat. We're in a college classroom where they're not allowing you to use notes. Right, the graph is not going to help you because pi over 6 is a weird thing. Right, so pi over 6 is? What is the um, conversion factor for radians and degrees? 180. So how many times does 6 go into 180? Okay, so we're really looking at a 30 degree angle. Okay, so this is the triangle that you want. Okay. All right. What are the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Like root 2, root 2x, and 1, root 2, root 2, root 
Mm. Anybody? One, two, three. No. Uh -uh. Uh, I usually make the hypotenuse two because the short, I can do that because the short leg is half of that, which is one. Okay, so Some people go one and one half. So what does this uh, become here? It's something root, okay? And the way that you remember, it is root three. Uh, and obviously you could do the Pythagorean theorem and you could go this squared plus this squared equals that, right? So two squared is four, four minus one is three. That's why it's the square root of three. But the way, you were pretty close on one, two, three. The way I remember it is this has a 30 degree angle in it and it, so it has a root three. The 45, 45, 90 has two equal sides and so these are root two. Okay? That's how I remember those. Serious question though, like if I say 2x and with x and then mm -hmm. x is 3, that's but, correct still or not? Sure, that's correct, yeah. Okay. But when we're trying to actually figure out the value of the cosine of that angle, we don't want x's in there. We just want the numbers. But if you did the ratio, they would cancel out in the end anyway, so it's okay. All right, so cosine from Sokotoa is what? Okay, so the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle is? Cameron. Please don't blurt out and interrupt when I'm trying to. Okay, root three, and the hypotenuse is two. So that means the cosine of pi, or I mean the, oh, but we weren't doing cosine, we were doing sine. My bad, sorry. So uh, opposite over hypotenuse is one half. Okay? Um, so that's gonna be minus, uh, if this is one half, So this has become one half. So one divided by one half is two. So it's actually two over pi. Okay. So that's a little bit of a strange one. So these turn into uh, addition. Yeah, Borsky out of the way. Uh, and so it's one over pi. Which makes more sense to me. That's a less startling result because I would expect that a trig function would have sort of a pi in the answer. But four. And have you looked at the graph of secant squared? Maybe you should someday. Hi, Courtney. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, okay, so now we're going on to 41. Uh, you can look. Um, scores were not good. The high score was 5 out of 12. I knew that. That's why I had you guys work in partners and use the book because I thought maybe I'm not going to put those in the computer. Uh, no, you didn't. Uh, you and Sammy got four out of twelve. Okay. Does, sure. Is that okay if we still do it? Would you, oh. You see what just happened there? So what's the answer? Zero. Uh huh. Let's go back to the conversation that I was having with Brooke before, and now let's open this up to the entire class. Our suspicion, because this is going from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6, is that tangent cubed is an odd function, okay? How can we show that that is the case? I'm putting the number x into x and negative x. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, ooh, that's a great question, and I suppose technically the answer is yes. Um, yeah, I didn't really think about that. Right, but see, I don't know what the tangent of x is, so I'm going to pick an actual numerical value. And so uh, zero is not good because it comes out to be zero both times, and funny things happen with zero. Uh, I don't know the tangent of one. I'm going to go with pi over six, yeah, so let's figure out what the... Try, tangent of uh, pi over 6. Yeah, so we already talked about pi over 6 is how many degrees? 30. So that brings us back to the old 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so tangent is? Okay, so that would be uh, 1 over root 3. So the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Uh, and if I cube that, then that's just going to be 1 over 3 to the 3 halves, okay? What, the real question is, what's the tangent of negative pi over 6? And so to answer that, 
This is weird, but um, this, if I turn this into the, like the unit circle, yeah. negative means I go this way, right? Yeah. So how does that change the sides of the triangle? Negative one. Good. The two stays the same, the root three stays the same, but this one, since it's flipped down here, becomes negative one. So now what's the tangent of negative pi over six? Negative one over three. Or over root 3, I'm sorry. And then you cube it, and it's going to be the same but opposite sign, so that means it's odd. Okay, so the answer is going to be 0. So even functions stuff, really? Because like you yeah, you don't really get much out of that. So let's hope that this is an odd function. So let's uh, play that game again um, with, what do you want to, uh, I don't like 0 because you still, you just get 0, so. Um, I'm a, a little nervous about the x squareds and the x to the 6 parts, though. Um, but I don't know the sine of 1. So we're going to have to maybe go the sine of 1? What's the sine of 1? Yeah, but we're trying to do these calculator lists. Uh, but McKinsey would point out that pi is outside of the range in the graph. Right? Yeah, let's just do pi over 2. Cool. Okay, all right. Appreciate your... Uh, okay, it's going to be all right. All right, so sine of pi over 2 is a nice one to pick because it's fairly easy because, as Brooke said, you can just look at the graph, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1, okay? So if I plug pi over 2 into this whole thing, then I would get uh, pi squared over 4 on the top times 1, so nobody cares, over 1 plus pi to the 6th over 64 on the bottom, okay? I'm not going to simplify that. I'm just going to leave it like that, all right? Okay, so now let's figure out what the sine of <coughs> negative pi over 2 is. So that would mean that I have to go this way on my graph to negative pi over 2. So it's going to be negative 1. So that makes, since this is negative 1, but this is negative pi over 2 squared, when I square negative pi over 2, I still get a positive pi squared over 4, right? But then I multiply it by a negative 1 instead of a 1. So that makes it negative pi squared over 4. Okay? And then this 1 stays the same. This still stays positive even though it's a negative because it's an even power. So that's pi to the 6th over 64. So positive, negative, those are opposites of each other. So hallelujah. I mean, we knew it already. It's odd. So the answer is 0. Why do we know it already? Because... There's no way that we could solve this uh, integral without that knowledge at this point in our lives. There's no u substitution that we can make. We'd have to use a different method that we haven't learned yet. Yeah, always a way. Um, if you would take a gander, just for funnies, in the back of your book, if you turn all the way back to the... Um, the cardboard pages, uh, cardstock pages, to number seven. Look at that table of integrals. I love this. All the way the very ones. So there is a table of 62 different uh, common integrals that come up later in this book. Um, so, which we won't get to at all, no. So, for example, if you wanted to know the integral of the square root of a squared minus u squared over u squared, that turns out to be negative 1 over u times the square root of a squared minus u squared minus the arc sine of u over a plus c. Why is there a natural yeah, we'll get to those eventually. Um, so, there's a, oh no, there's more, I forgot, they even have them on the back page too. So, there's actually 112 different, uh, you know, so, um, there's all kinds of them um, that we're not uh, getting into. Yeah, I had a professor in college who said that sometimes engineers are asked to solve problems that are relatively common like that, but they look super crazy. So the people that bring them that problem don't know that it's actually a fair, you know what I mean? It looks really tricky. And so then they'll be like, hmm, okay, woo, that's a, woo. I'm going to need a couple days. I'll get back to you. And then they just kind of, you know, hang out and on and on and, you know, do that. I don't know if that's true. Uh, okay, so um, what about 43? It's the root 3 and the square that I got in the 
Okay, so let's make a guess. Just okay, one plus two x. That seems like a. I don't know. Are you? <laughs> yeah, you're writing this down. <laughs> yeah, you're writing this down. Okay, so let's let du equal uh, one plus two x, and so I'm let's du two dx. <clears throat> All right, so now that changes this to um, one half. No. Oh, okay, so you're ahead of the game. You've changed this already into, okay, love it. So she's changing that into dx, so that's one half, and that's a du. Yeah, which if we write as a fractional exponent is what? U to the two thirds. Okay, uh, and then the thirteen now becomes a, and the zero becomes a one. All right. Is everybody okay with where those numbers are coming from? Uh, Colby, you know how we change thirteen to twenty-seven and zero to one. Okay, Tiana, you got that. Okay. Um, all right. So then, in order to take, right. Exactly. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to rewrite this as uh, u to the negative two thirds du, and then I will uh, let you solve it from there. You uh, come up. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's what it uh, should look like. Let me finish it. We're good? What happened to all your notebook papers? Uh, students Whoa. used it. Can you tell them about it? What happened to the, uh, it was, so when you put the three over two? Uh-huh. How did you get that? Because if I add one to negative two thirds, I get one third. Yeah. And then the reciprocal of one third is three. Oh, so three one times one half, half is, yeah. You and fractions, man. It's, oh, it's fractions. A, I know, I noticed that. It is a struggle. Oh, well, that seems like a great uh, philosophy. It is. I like fractions. I don't know that anybody really does. I can do decimals, though. Yeah. Pretty good, though. Um, fractions aren't very useful anymore. The only thing you use them for, really, is uh, if you're measuring used to use them in the stock market, but now they change that all to decimals too. So, uh, Okay, 44, what do you like? U is sine of x. U is sine of x. It's really not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, so du is cosine of x dx. And then we pretty much have got it. Because... The sine of x inside here gets replaced with the u, so that becomes, instead of the sine of the sine of x, it's the sine of u. So that's taken care of. The cosine x dx becomes just du. So that's taken care of. And then we plug in pi over 2, and now we know the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And the sine of 0 is 0. Antiderivative of sine is negative, negative cosine. So whatever you're thinking, just think down <laughs> and then do that. Yeah. Um, okay, now, a little while ago, I chastised Caleb. He said chastised because it's close to chastain. Mm -hmm. I love that word. I chastised Caleb chastain because he wanted to plug in one for sine, and I said, I don't know what the sine of 1 is. And he was like, oh, just go to a calculator. And look, now we have a 1 here. So you should be like, what's up? They leave the answer as negative cosine of 1. Yep, uh, because that doesn't simplify to be anything. Um, minus what is the cosine of 0? Well, if you're an engineer and you leave it like that, not Good thing we're not engineers. What's the cosine of 0? 
1, and it's a negative cosine, so it's going to be minus 1. So this final answer is actually 1 minus the cosine of 1. You're going to leave it like that. Sweet. Super expensive. Uh, you have to get it so that it equals what's left in the problem. Okay, right. And since we have a cosine in there, then we're there. But. Right, of course. Yeah, no, it's super expensive to order that stuff, and it's really expensive just to even do it yourself because the materials are really expensive. My wife would love to remodel our kitchen, and I always tell her, would you rather go to Europe or would you rather remodel the kitchen? And bless her heart, she always chooses Europe. I care nothing about what our kitchen looks like. Uh, okay, so A is just a constant. So when we take the derivative of it? It's zero, yeah. All right, so with that in mind, okay. u equals, so we'll, wait, wait. we'll figure it out in a second, don't panic. What? Uh, there were some a's in there, yeah, so the, the it probably was in the back, yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost the one that I read off, yeah, very close to that. Uh, what does u equal? Do you want? Uh, x squared plus a squared. So du equals 2x dx. Okay, so the x squared plus a squared goes in there underneath the square root, so that is u to the one half. Huh? When I took the derivative, what happened to the a? Yeah, what she said. It's a constant. It's just like a number. Right. So what this is, Colby, is it's a general form, and it's uh, something that comes up a lot, which is why it's in the back of the book, because the square root of x squared plus a number squared is a semicircle. So that's a pretty common shape. So what they're saying is this is going to give us a general formula for, then we can choose a, a value for a, but a is always just going to be a constant. It's always going to be 3 or 5 or, you know, whatever. So whenever we take the derivative of that, it's going to cancel out. Okay? It's a little weird when they start introducing new letters and saying, yeah, I know letters are variables, but this letter is a constant. Yeah. Okay, so what about that x? So we have replaced only this part right here. Now we still have an x dx. Well, over here I have 2x dx. So how can I change this so that it's x dx? Right. So it's going to be 1 half du equals x dx. So that's going to give me a 1 half and a du. Uh, okay, and then McKinsey asks the question, what about the substitution now? Well, we just do what we always do. So I'm going to just take a and plug it in there for x. A squared plus A squared, which is 2A squared. Uh, and then I'm going to take 0 and plug it in there and go A squared. And then I'm going to say to you, finish it. Uh, okay, so the antiderivative is, uh, it's U to the 3 halves multiplied by the reciprocal, which is 2 thirds, so that is 1 third. Okay. I got a squared and 2a squared. Uh, so that's one third times. If I put 2a squared in there, uh, okay, what you guys are forgetting is it's not just the a squared that's being raised to the 3 halves power, the 2 is being raised to the 3 halves power also. Okay, so that's where the weird things in the back of the book comes from. So it's actually 2 to the 3 halves times. What's a squared to the 3 halves? A to the third. Minus. Now I'm just putting an a squared in there. So that's just going to be a cubed. So um, did they factor out an a cubed or something in the answer? Okay, so they went one third times the quantity, so they factored out the a cubed basically. So if I factor out an a cubed, then this is, this right here is the uh, square root of two cubed, right? 
Yeah, so they factored out an a cubed minus one times a cubed. That's super awkward, the way that that answer is. Remember that one, the answer was four? I like that one better than this. Okay, 46 is the same deal. Try it. Uh, okay, so you let u equal a squared minus x squared, I'm hoping, which means that uh, du is equal to negative 2x dx, uh, which let's just cut to the chase, and so that's negative 1 half du is going to be x dx. Okay, so that makes the integral uh, negative 1 half u to the 1 half du, right? Okay, then you change your uh, limits of integration, they're technically called. If I plug an a into here, uh, a squared minus a squared is 0. And then if I plug a 0 into here, a squared minus x squared is a squared. Uh-huh. So antiderivative of u to the 1 half is? So I always like to do the exponent first, u to the 3 halves, and then multiply by the reciprocal of that is 2 thirds. So that's negative 1 third. And that is from 0 to a squared. I don't know. It's probably Logan's fault. I've done it before, but I don't know. 0 <laughs> a squared. Uh, okay, so if I plug in 0, then you get 0. Minus, if you plug in uh, a squared, then you get a to the third, right? Right. Um, so then this negative and this negative cancel each other out and you get a cubed over three. Okay. Okay. No. That's just a silly thing to say. Nobody hates calculus. That's not even funny, Mackenzie. That's not even a funny joke. A joke has to be like something that has a chance of actually being true. No one would believe that. All right, 47, u equals? Okay. So du equals? Love it. So let's make some substitutions. Uh, so that's going to be the square root of u. Uh huh. So this is gone, and then the dx becomes a du, so that's gone. But then, uh-oh, we still have an x in there. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. Yeah. So close. It's like right on the edge of your brain. It's like trying to remember a, uh-huh. U equals x minus 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X that equals one. u plus 1. That one. I actually that. Good. Uh, okay, so we have to um, tuck that in there. So that u to the 1 half is times? Times u plus 1. You had it. Good. Uh, okay, and then we have to... Uh, the du is the end of the end of the problem. It's like the the integral symbol and the du are like parentheses, and, huh? Whatever. Uh, okay. Then if you plug in two, you get one, one and if you plug in one, you get zero. zero. Okay. Now I'm going to distribute the u to the one half. So that's uh, u to the three halves plus u to the one half du. We have not taken the antiderivative yet. yet. We have not yet. yet. Okay. So the antiderivative of u to the 3 halves is? How about 2 fifths u to the 5 over 2? Yeah. Well, I didn't distribute first. And so oh, okay. Well, we, why is that happening? We can wait and see in the end if that works out to be the same. Um, plus, the antiderivative of u to the 1 half is?
Uh huh. These two? No, before the These two? Yeah. Because the powers are different. X squared plus X oh, is just know. X squared plus X. Six, ten. Oh, goodness, no. Okay. Good Lord. Oh, goodness. Oh, you know when you do these acid cleaning that have a lot of acid on Friday? I love it. <laughs> Cody Bates goes, he just starts laughing at her. That's what he did. Lindsay Bates goes, you know there's no school on Friday? So said she said things. that to her own father? Yes, and then he started laughing huh. at her. Huh. That's funny. Just laugh. I mean, he well, answered eventually. He started practice on Sunday, Saturday. Right. Five hours after school. If, it's, if, the, if the day Saturday. ends in the letter Y, there's faster. Okay, 48, and then uh, we're done? Yes, well, done. I mean, when I played the exciting practice, like what? five hours. Three hours. What is you? Like five hours. What is you? I know Sunday, I know Sunday. I've had a three hour practice every Saturday, every first Saturday of the season since I was a freshman. But this year, we're not doing it. We're doing each of the three groups of one hour each, and it's too fun. There's a reason that the football coaches and all that is like not Right, so that's a good thing to notice is that we don't have an X in the work that we've done already. So we're going to have to do this trick right here. Yeah, so I have to what? take this and solve it for X. So if U equals 1 plus 2X, what does X equal? Uh, nope. U minus 1 over 2. Right? Same, I mean, it's not the same. 1 minus U and U minus 1 are not the same. Um, okay, so this is going to be a little bit gross. Uh, so the x becomes u minus 1 over 2. The square root of 1 plus 2x becomes yeah, the square root of u. Okay, oh, <laughs> that's as far as you were going to get. Well, I don't know what to do with that. Wait, why don't you just move it up? Move what up? The square root of u. Can you do that? Sure. So let's move that up as uh, u to the negative 1 half. Yeah, can we get the limits of integration in there real quick? 9 and 1, yeah. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, okay, so now we're going to distribute the u to the negative 1 half. Yeah, this is a brutal one. Um, so u to the negative 1 half times u is u to the 1 half. And that's uh, over 2 minus u to the negative one half times one is u to the negative one over two. Okay. And do those not count as like exponents? Yeah, they're not like so you can't combine them. You could factor out this one half if you wanted to make your life a little bit easier and make this a one fourth in front. And then just make it u to the one half minus u to the negative one half. Okay, and I will let you uh, finish that on your own. We are done for the day.